Welcome to See Social Differently, a podcast brought to you by Sprout Social, where we talk about topics in social and how they're changing the industry. I'm Alicia Daytner, and today I'm talking with Brian Cook from PF Candle Co. about one of the biggest evolutions in social, short form video. Hey, Brian, thank you for joining me today. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, before we get too far, I'd love for you to tell me about your role as the social media marketing coordinator and a little bit about what your day-to-day looks like, even though we know there are no two days that are the same (laughs) in social. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, you make a great point. I feel like a lot of people in specifically social media can relate when someone says that they have to wear a lot of hats. And it's always kind of difficult when specifically even some people like my parents ask me what I do and it's like oh geez like I really have to think about that um oh my gosh (laughs) but on a day-to-day for me um basically I help out a lot with our social strategy um I do anything from scheduling basically I create um a monthly schedule that we abide by matching it really closely with like product launches um anything new that's happening and then I also um help with analytics so I do all the KPI reports I do weekly and monthly as well um, I'm also involved with our influencer gifting and influencer outreach. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like there's so much. I also help with like the production side when it comes to video photo. I do have a colleague, Camille, our social media content coordinator, that she's doing a majority of our filming now. Um, but I still help out from time to time when there's like multiple videos that we have to make or photos that we have to take um, if we're not outsourcing that. So, yeah, I guess it's the, the typical does many <laughs> projects at once. <laughs> Yeah, uh, definitely many hats. And I love uh, the call out to all of our parents um, who are desperately trying to understand what we do. And we are desperately trying to explain it to them. Um, Everyone's doing a great job, but it is, yeah, it is a challenge to explain what you do, especially in an industry like social, where things are evolving at an incredibly fast pace. It's something that can change literally in a day since it's so fluid. um, And that's that's one challenge that we have is everything happens in real time. And like, if you miss that moment, then a lot of times you're trying to play catch up. <laughs> yeah, and it is, it's important to hit the right moment. And sometimes you don't know that you've hit the right moment until you hit it, right? So you can't always plan for things. Um, I know there's a, an ongoing joke about, you know, make things go viral. Like, can, it, <laughs> can you make it go viral? Like that... No one can really plan for that. So sometimes it's those those moments in time that you don't plan for that end up being something completely, you know, like huge. Yeah, I, I think when it comes to going viral, things of that sort, there's definitely, at least in the beginning, there's not longevity for it. So my thought process has always been like kind of like steady growth, um, like brand building, things of that sort, and then potentially going viral within that process. But yeah. I, w- I think it's, it's funny that you say that because it is kind of a running joke in the industry, specifically with TikTok being an emerging platform for brands, is every brand wants to have that viral moment. Um, and I think it kind of happens when you're just specifically with TikTok, I can't speak for the other platforms since they're all so different. Um, but one thing that you notice is going viral kind of just happens, not basically out of your control, but it's something that happens with you just having fun in the process. And I think it it, yeah. it speaks a lot of the authenticity that people are looking for on the platform, that if you're trying to go viral, it sometimes becomes very obvious opposed to when it happens in the most like kind of raw moment or authentic moment. Yeah. And that I love the way that you say that too, that sometimes those viral moments can happen when you're having the most fun. Um, and one of the things that we are going to talk about today is a moment when you were having a lot of fun. <laughs> and those who follow the PF Candle Co. Uh, TikTok account may recognize you from um, your candle costume. And so one of the things I want to talk more with you about specifically is this creation of short form videos for social platforms and how that rapid evolution has change your role because you are the person who is thinking about not only the strategy, but in the case of the candle costume, you're also the face of the execution. Yeah, I think, you know, one thing that's definitely changed my role, which I think you mentioned is like specifically the candle costume. Um, Previously, I I never really liked to be in front of the camera so much. It was more so like I was always kind of behind the scenes. Um, 
you know, you get to set up spaces, things of that sort, specifically in our industry when it comes to like home fragrance, like it has a lot more to do with the space and how it elevates your space and like basically adds yeah. to your atmosphere. And with short term video, like I think it's it's a lot different production wise when it comes to a platform like TikTok. You no longer have to create like either larger budgets or larger setups when it comes to like having to do with like traditional photo um, and it allows you to kind of be a little bit more organic and create videos that don't have such high production, which has its pros and cons. Um, the con yeah. there is you definitely have to pump out a lot more, a lot quicker. And sometimes like depending on what you're trying to, what kind of audience you're trying to reach, there's some opportunity to trying to figure that out along the way. Um, but I, I definitely think that it, it, it allows you to become a little bit more adaptable. And like we mentioned earlier, like specifically with platforms like TikTok, like, you kind of have to just have fun with it. And not that you should yeah. take it seriously because ultimately, it, you know, it is my job. But if you're not having fun with it, I think it will translate behind the camera a lot. Um, so I think you definitely want to just kind of experiment a little bit. I love that you have leaned into that, especially on that platform, because it could, again, like this industry is always changing. Like that could change. And TikTok may one day become a place where the videos aren't as short or they don't expire as fast. And so we never know what's going to happen. So yeah, I love your approach to just like, see like, what do we have right now and what can we make with it? Yeah. And I think specifically with other platforms as well, like since TikTok has been kind of like this almost like industry shakeup, um, like, of course, if you, we all know that Instagram, at least everyone in the industry knows that Instagram is pivoting towards reels a lot more. And I, I know the algorithm's always changing, which is of course a constant challenge for us is, how do we continue up engagement with a platform without regurgitating too much of the same content? Um, but yeah, even with that, it allows us to kind of like test things out a little bit more when it comes to short-term video on platforms like Facebook and Instagram. At the moment, we have a larger brand audience when it comes to Instagram. So it lets us kind of tell our story a little bit more and even show like the background with the product, um, like what goes yeah. into our production processes, like the people behind the company. And it got, kind of stems from the culture, I would say, from our um, owner, Kristen, as well, is she's always been big on kind of like, you know, experiment, have fun, like allow yourself to kind of like find what works for the audience. And she's very engaged as well with our audience and like understands our customer and our followers really well. So it's been very helpful. Like if I have an idea or if anyone else on our team has an idea, like it allows that like culture to kind of like grow from there where it's like, you're not scared to test something new out within like other traditional structures, maybe there's like kind of like a disconnect between like levels of like the associate to like the manager role or like the higher up yeah. role where it's kind of like, I feel like that does limit you a lot. Um, but I yeah. think, I think if your higher ups understand and like kind of give you that freedom to trust the team, um, you definitely find a lot of success from there. Uh, I love this. This is like such a, this is such a plug for listeners of this podcast, regardless <laughs> of their level, like get it, get in there, like understand what's happening. You're going to understand the people who are on your team in those roles. You're definitely going to understand your customers and your consumers more. You're going to just, yeah, you're going to be inside the sphere of social and how could that not help you with your overall strategy? Like we know it does. So I love that you articulated that. And especially it sounds like you're, you know, one of your founders lives and breathes that method as well. It's definitely very helpful. <laughs> yeah, of course, because I could imagine. So you, one of the videos that you made for TikTok features you wearing a PF candle company costume. So the candles, um, if you're not familiar, they have this iconic like amber glass, uh, and like this label on them, at least the earliest versions. I know you have other products now too, but so your costume was a, a human sized version <laughs> of your iconic candle, um, which is fantastic. I could imagine on paper when you pitch that saying, I'm going to make a video dress as a, one of our candles, um, to somebody who doesn't understand the space, that may seem a little like far out, um, is far out a thing people <laughs> say, probably not. Um, but yeah, like I would love to hear more about how you came to that decision to like pop on this candle costume and create fantastic content. I, I did recall that someone from our development team had made a candle costume for one of our Halloween costume contests a couple years ago. And I was like, 
was like, hey, maybe we can borrow it from, um, their name is Sam, from Sam and see if they're okay with just using this costume. I was like, it's kind of like a good way to make fun of ourselves and basically use Duolingo's like what's successful for them. But at the same time, like for other people in the industry that like basically their higher ups show them like, hey, look at this, like look how viral this video is. Like how do we recreate that? So it was kind of like a joke. And sure enough, yeah, it was our most viral video. Currently it's at 1.5 million views. Um, so I, I thought it was going to do well, but I, I didn't expect it to get that viral, <laughs> to be honest. So we've talked a little bit about these fun, uh, you know, short form videos that maybe play a little bit more to attention getting or something that is unexpected, but your role requires you to create all kinds of content and messaging. So how do you strike a balance between the types of content that you create and post? Yeah, I think it definitely varies from platform to platform. Um, but our core, I guess, when it comes to strategy, when it's sharing like our message or our products would be necessarily like kind of like a little bit more about the brand, like the fact that we're independently owned, um, the fact that we're still a smaller company with under 100 employees is something that we, we'd we like to kind of like strike that balance with. Yeah. So it, it kind of is showing like a, a window of like what we each do individually, not just from like the social media side or the marketing side, but even just from the retail side or the production side and like even our development side. And so I think there's a lot of great ways that you can show your product. For instance, like when I first started working with the brand, like I didn't know much about candles. <laughs> like to be honest, like <laughs> I didn't know that you had to trim your wicks or else like the flame gets too hot and like it creates oh, yeah. pizza or it burns badly. Yeah. And there's a lot of great tips that we can incorporate in content that way. Cause I was like, if yeah. I didn't know this, then I'm sure there's so many people out there that also don't know this or I just assumed like with the production process that like, for instance, one specific product, like our core candle, that's like the standard size. I thought during production, it was made, you know, like all in one day. And I didn't realize how intricate it was in the warehouse that like pretty much there's like a daily schedule where the pouring happens, the scent making happens, the cooling yeah. happens. And I think it was like a fun way to kind of show that to our viewers as well, specifically our customers that get that product to see the different steps and levels it takes to create that product and how intricate it is and how many people in LA like it took to create that one specific <laughs> yeah. product. So I think besides the eye-catching like kind of funny viral videos, there's a lot of opportunity that you can definitely share your process, share your product in other ways that aren't just the traditional like in your space, like the candle and put it in your bedroom type of <laughs> content. We hear a lot in our industry that, you know, Brands and businesses think that their product or their service can't be translated to a certain type of media or to a certain platform. And video is definitely that. So I would love, like, you're definitely an expert on what you do. So I would love your advice for businesses that think that video is not, like, is not for them. What would you say to them? I think there's definitely ways that you can kind of show a window into your product or company or brand story by testing out different types of short form video it doesn't necessarily have to be like tips or tricks but a lot of people specifically on like certain platforms when they follow the brand just want to see kind of like a window into like what goes behind it and it definitely yes. helps complement the story of the brand as well and even appreciation of the product for instance i would say creators of specific brands if they're passionate about their product they can kind of open up a window to allow their customers to also become passionate about that product because they see how much care or time goes into that product so even if it's like getting creative where it's like kind of showing like maybe doing like a warehouse tour or showing like the amount of time and care that goes into creating that product or even kind of showing like a little bit of the brand personality by sharing your teammates. So there's there's definitely a lot of niche videos that you can create that will find a niche audience and help grow that brand. Um, and it uh, kind of the possibilities are limitless. So I would definitely say try not to limit yourself with not doing video because if you think about it as time goes on you'll fall so far behind like as a traditional marketer like we're not like magazines or paper print aren't our form of news or even like i guess access to media any longer and if you continue yeah. to only use that strategy then it will as as soon as that disappears then you kind of are left in the dark there so i would say definitely allow yourself to experiment and don't expect to go viral or for your content to get great engagement in the beginning. But I think as you continue to learn and grow from that process, it, it definitely comes from there. 
I couldn't have said it any better myself, um, Brian. That was like the I think the perfect way to summarize what we've been talking about here. And so, I just really appreciate not only your your insight into video and how you approach it, but just hearing how you collaborate with your team has been really inspiring. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so listeners today, some takeaways from today's episode is that um, we started talking about the evolution of roles in this industry and we ended with how teams and content creators can leverage video without getting left behind. So take another look at short form video. Um, think about what your brand is currently creating. Think about what's inspiring. Give it a try. Have fun. Um, and listen to your team work together and evolve together. So that's it. Again, thank you, Brian, so much for joining us today. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, check out our other episodes of See Social Differently. We will talk to you soon.